Welcome back to another Roundup episode. We have got quite a lot of stories today. Uh, $70 games. Big Strauss is talking about them. Lord of the Rings. Yes, Lord of the Rings MMO has been resurrected, which, uh, I mean, in light of Rings of Power being a bit of a squib, <laughs> there's, there's probably a little bit of, hmm, Amazon handling of this IP. How good is it? But that said, Middle Earth Enterprises, now owned by the Embracer Group, maybe they're going to have uh, better ideas about how that can be used. We'll get into it, as well as a bunch of other stories, but let's kick it off with Strauss Alnick, the boss of Take-Two Interactive, uh, talking about $70 games. Now, Take-Two, obviously you think of them, and... You think GTA, GTA Online, Red Dead Redemption 2, you know, all those Rockstar games. Um, of course, as we covered in a recent video, uh, by revenue, you should really think of them uh, by their most recent acquisition, which is Zynga, which makes up a large amount of the money that they rake in. But anyway, in a recent earnings call, uh, there was some talk about this, right? So Take-Two were one of the first to, I think, along with Sony, try to get those $70 games. The odd thing about them, though, is they did it on NBA uh, 2K21. Now, you think about a game like, say, Red Dead Redemption 2, you could maybe say, like, well, yeah, that that feels like a Sony first party in terms of, like, you know, its quality and the amount of game in it. Therefore, the 70s justified. But NBA 2K21, really? Ugh. I remember the drama back when it happened. But there was a question about this and about if the audience pushback is actually an issue. Uh, of course, we recently did a video on the price of games, um, talking a little bit about how the uh, basically some sales are down, but revenue is, is up. We're not seeing a pushback on frontline price, Zelnik said. What we're seeing is consumers are seeking to limit their spending by going um, either to the stuff they really, really care about, blockbusters or to value. Sometimes it can be both. And the good news is we have a bunch of blockbusters and we have a wonderful catalog, which to me does make a lot of sense. Now also, Zalnik's not just going to say, yeah, actually you're, you're right on the investor earning call. You got me stumped. We should go back to $60. Obviously, whenever the next GTA comes out, you can expect it to be a $70 game, at least. When you get into it though, and you think about their library, with those big sports games, those people buy a sports game every year. They, they just buy the new entry. That's how it is. Even though they always get critically dunked on and uh, you know they can have some pretty damn predatory monetization, that's just an insta-buy. You look at some of their other more blockbustery games like Red Dead 2, and it's like, yeah, of course that'll make, uh, you know, that'll, that'll be $70. Ultimately, it comes down to quality. And in the likes of a Redfall situation, it doesn't make sense for it. This is one of the strengths of indie games. Indie games can price based on what they believe the value of their quality and quantity of content is, whereas in the AAA world, it's just like everybody is trying to set it at $70, but not everybody's making a game that is worth $70, so it's a funny enough situation. The next thing, though, and uh, to be honest, I almost clickbaited myself when I saw this, it is Bloodborne PC. Uh, it's real, but is it real? So, this has been talked about for years. Uh, a modder and data miner, Lance McDonald, seems to have actually got some proof that Bloodborne does exist on PC. Uh, this is with a file name on the Bloodborne wiki that was uploaded by somebody using the name of a FromSoft uh, artist, right? And it features a conventional PC build uh, debug name string. So, quite interesting. He says this is not new, it's just a quirk that he noticed recently on the site. Now, while this does sort of confirm this is a thing, what does it really confirm? What does it not confirm? Well, it doesn't confirm that we're going to be getting this in a commercially available state. Uh, obviously, Bloodborne runs on PC. It's developed on PC, you know? <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, there will almost certainly be, you know, a, a functional game there um, used on, like, a development hardware for, like, screenshot purposes, that kind of thing. Also, there's a lot of times where you'll be deploying to PC to actually play the game, um, you know, on, on really good hardware because you're in pre-optimization and you still want to be able to play your game in pre-optimization. So really, this is just uh, another log in the pyre with uh, with Bloodborne. I think the thing that we would all love to see is uh, like the Demon Souls remaster that was like truly incredible uh, on the PS5. If that was to happen for Bloodborne, it would be incredible. I mean, can you imagine Bloodborne 60 FPS with good frame timing? That would be completely insane. That would sell all of the copies. Uh, sadly, though, you're probably going to have to wait. Next, though, Lord of the Rings, one of my favorite, uh, you know, one of my favorite bits of IP out there. And last week, we saw the announcement from the Embracer Group and Amazon that said they're going to be continuing their partnership. Now, this is a partnership that started with 
Tomb Raider. So yeah, there's more Tomb Raider on the way. Uh, this time though, they're using Lord of the Rings license where Amazon Games Orange County, who are the developers of New World, they are working on a new Lord of the Rings MMO that spans the timeline from The Hobbit to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now, this is actually an MMO that is completely separate to the one that was cancelled in 2011. Uh, it was being worked on by Amazon, but it was quite weird because... Um, Leu were acquired by Tencent. That ended up killing the deal. So it's one of those things, like you look at New World in, in quite a lot of ways, it's accomplished in some other ways. It obviously has got its problems, but it is now uh, made by an experienced team of MMORPG developers, right? They have done one of these MMOs once. And what we heard about from New World is uh, is really, I think it was down to like technical issues, I think with the Amazon Lumberyard engine, which is a modified version of CryEngine. But anyway, that's kind of besides the point. Basically, there was a way newer version of the technology that they could have used for New World, but doing so would have added like one or two years to the project because a whole bunch of work uh, would have to be redone. Done. So they ended up just shipping in the version that they had been developing on, plus a few upgrades. In this case, you would assume that those issues that New World ran into would uh, not really be a problem. Now, one thing that did get them some pretty bad headlines is how they perhaps talked about Lotro, you know, the Lord of the Rings uh, online, the MMO that already exists. So Christopher, or Christoph even, Christoph uh, Hartman, who is um, the VP of Amazon Games, sort of suggested the players of Lord of the Rings Online would simply just move to the new game, as if it's just the sequel and everyone goes. You know, it's like, oh, this is World of Warcraft 2. Leave World of Warcraft 1, uh, right? But, you know, they both be coexisting. So it came off pretty bizarre. He said, first of all, I have respect uh, for them to keep it going that long. Uh, they have a not huge, but very dedicated fan base. That is true. There are the people who love that game, love that game. And uh, they actually do have a really robust plan to really support that well into the future, which is fascinating. He says, but looking, uh, but looking just at the technology where we're at now and where we'll be in a couple of years, it's just worlds apart. Now that is true. Lotro is a very traditional MMO of its era. I think they actually can coexist, even though the most likely scenario is for people to just move over because the other one is an old game. It's not a bad game, but the industry moves on at some point, and it's a long time from their release to ours. In some ways, that's true. I think I'll see that. Um, in other ways, I think its niche fan base will probably continue playing the game that they've put a lot of investment into. Now, the uh, the actual developers of Lotro now, Standing Stone Games, they uh, did respond Lotro's not going away. Like you, uh, we and our partners at Middle Earth Enterprises are huge fans of Lotro. It's beloved. Uh, it is beloved. It is 16. It is evergreen. Uh, it is like long-lived Ents, Elves, and Dwarves. And we, uh, mere mortals, are the stewards of Lotro and its community. Standing Stone has every intention of growing and supporting this community. The road goes ever on. Do you know, I remember watching a, it was like a video or a stream on the Standing Stone uh, YouTube page. Maybe it was Lotro YouTube page, uh, whatever it was. It was just talking with some guy in the team and they were just talking about, oh yeah, you know, this is our multiple, 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 multiple year plan. So... Whatever is going on there, it does seem to be actually chugging along quite nicely. The next thing then is uh, Epic throwing money at the problem in a way that can actually benefit you and me. So the latest Epic Mega Sale is there. There's a 25% off voucher that's really fascinating because Epic covers that. It actually does not come away from the developer. So if you spend 20 bucks in a game and Epic gives you know gives you five bucks off, the developer still gets 20. Um, which is kind of relevant to us because our game, The Pale Beyond, is on the Epic Game. Uh, it is on the Epic Game Store as well as Steam. And if you would like to get 25% off The Pale Beyond, then yeah, I, I suppose the link will be down below somewhere and you can check out uh, the game that we made. Uh, so the other thing that Epic are doing is they're adding in reward points. Now, if you want to, if you want to try to get people over to your platform, providing value is a, is a pretty good way to do it. With the reward points, you basically get five percent back. So five percent of your total spend goes into your rewards balance, and that can be used on anything else in the store. Now, obviously, this is some very basic commercial theory that it makes you invest in that storefront because you do have some, you know, free cash just sitting on your account. Now. 5%, this is basically 5% store cashback. And really 5% is pretty damn good. I know a lot of like grocery stores with their point system, it's like 1%, right? So 
this this is fairly decent now it's also a bit of an interesting year because we've got star trek resurgence dead island 2 lord of the rings uh, return to moria and alan wake 2 all being epic game store exclusives which is always a fascinating thing because from everything that we know the epic game store is just a black hole it's like unless you are bringing a very large audience with you and you are shooting them in that direction uh it's just not going to sell that well at all so at the very least you can make you know make the best out of the better revenue split on epic with your most core people and then try to have your real release on steam uh, at, at some point later the next thing then sony they're going to have to pay for loot boxes so it's an interesting story and it's also one that is about like uh, you know who is culpable so loot boxes were actually deemed illegal gambling by a court in this case the loot boxes are the, in the form of fifa ultimate team in a game published by ea However, because they're facilitated through Sony's storefront, actually, it's saying that Sony is ultimately bearing the responsibility. Now, because we originally just thought, ah, you know, this is just going to go to appeal and there's maybe not much point in covering it, it's not really one of those situations. So, uh, GameIndustry.biz captured a German site called Games Market, and they reported, uh, right, that the court in question actually never uh, received a motion to appeal from sony's team and that actually means that it's going to stand so yeah, sony didn't contest it uh, and it now means that sony is basically on the hook to refund several hundred thousand euro to the plaintiffs uh, but austrian legal firm uh, padronus has said it has hundreds of other players interested in pursuing similar claims it's quite interesting the website uh, specifies uh, fifa counter-strike fortnite and call of duty as examples of games for which it will pursue claims so quite obviously with it going like this there's now uh, so was a little bit of a legal gold rush for them uh, because obviously they'll they will get you your money back and they will also have a big delicious juicy fee yeah kind of interesting limited to austria for now though a lot of other places are not really you know they're not taking a super hardcore stance it's funny we've got um a few people in our guild um from uh from the netherlands and uh you know anytime a loot box or something is involved you just go like hey hey uh, close your eyes mute your discord we're about to do a loot box and <laughs> you wouldn't want to be breaking the law <laughs> this is always a good way to have fun with them anyway so there is uh, the roundup of stories today pretty interesting i think um imagine if steam rewards uh, could go back into buying games on steam i think that would be pretty popular but also valve are so incumbent that they don't really have much of a reason to and i guess i think about the storefront thing in a very very broad way like if another store was to be more competitive and that was to uh, you know to encourage valve to be a bit more competitive both to developers and to consumers then you can certainly see that um you know that would be good for us but obviously steam still is the reigning king even to the point where ubisoft who had been epic game store and uh, you play connect or ubisoft connect whatever the hell it's called uh, they have of course recently themselves moved back to steam as have the likes of electronic arts quite a while ago so yeah basically gaben is a bit undefeatable and on that uh, absolute shocker, uh, goodbye. You can check out this video next. I'll see you next time.